Hi Capricorn, welcome to your January 2020 Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to it, if you are true to it, please don't forget to like, share and hit that true... Uh, hit that true button, hit that subscribe button if it should so resonate. With that said, if you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can do so on the website address below. And in uh, come March, March the 1st, March the 2nd, depending on the day, I am launching my Mindset Magic course. If you want to be a part of it, stay tuned. I'm gonna drop lots of little tidbits and uh, teasers about that so stay tuned for it with that said i would like to bless all of my decks of cards with all forms of love light peace prosperity and abundance and i pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good so let's see what january 2020 has in store for you it's not just a new month it's not just a new year it is a new decade start as you mean to carry on what are you going to do with it how are you going to make this happen how are you going to make it yours your actions and interactions with the world at large is the nine of swords right so this is the month interesting because virgo also got this card and what i said to them was this is about an overhaul of your mental health this is about you really paying attention to the things that are important to you when it comes to that sector what is it that makes you happy what is it that you know that brings you down now the nine of swords can be about worry anxiety fear depression i know a lot of you are thinking of here we go like straight out the gate in the new year no right this basically says that the nine of swords and your actions and interactions with the world at large we've got this big conjunction that's taking place in your sign right pluto and saturn are coming together jupiter is in your sign i think as we are in january as well it's gonna be uh the you're gonna have the full moon lunar eclipse Pluto Saturn conjunction you're going to have uh, Jupiter in your sign uh, on top of that you will have uh, blah, 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 Venus in your sign as well and of course you will have the south node in there so actually you know what let me take a moment to talk about this for you guys because it's going to be a big event right try to think about it this way the conjunction itself is going to bring you a grand rewrite this is a grand restructuring in some way shape or form it is a chance for you to truly step forward but you have to allow the old paradigms the old thought processes the old thought forms the old ways of doing things are now coming to a close whatever your tried and true methods were for doing things before they require restructuring in some cases they won't need to they won't be able to survive a restructuring they just need to change in some way shape or form now the fact that you've got the nine of swords in your actions and interactions with the world at large this is about you saying to yourself where is it that I create anxiety in my own life <clears throat> Where is it that I uh, hold myself back? Where is it that my mental outlook has an effect and an adverse effect at that on the things that I do or the ways that I'm able to step forward? Now, yours isn't necessarily a sign that's known for fast, uh, for fast changes or for fast anything. Capricorn's all about that slow, steady, progressive energy. Nine of Swords basically says, as uh, certain things have been built up over time so it's going to take probably around nine months the first nine months of this year for you to deprogram yourself from some of the old stuff that you have been carrying this is actually in in many ways this is actually a blessing in disguise because it means that you're doing the work so you're applying that slow steady progressive capricornian energy to changing your mind to changing your mindset uh, no shameless plug for my course in March of course but yeah this really is about a, an overhaul but it, this is taking place in your mind you're getting very proactive about this stuff so for some of you this could be about seeking out a counsellor it could be going for talking therapy um, for some of you you might start journaling this is about you being really proactive about cleaning out the closet of your mind whatever that might mean to you we're not just talking about your everyday thoughts we're talking about your subconscious we're talking about the stuff that is deep-seated all of that is coming to the surface and this month you're being very proactive about digging up those foundations so that you can take a look and inspect them and say do you know what do we need to like with a house structure capricorn right with a house you you check the foundations 
and if they are weakening or eroding or whatever you would underpin them so that you know the whole house doesn't give way this is kind of that that feeling that's the feeling that i get from this is you delving into the depths of your mind into the depths of your psyche into your sub subconscious and saying right okay what is it here that needs to come up what is it that is not even up for review but up for elimination what is it that needs to be removed now venus in your sign is kind of taking the edge off of this a bit because she wants harmony right she's kind of taking the the mm, out of it and then you've got jupiter in there as well who's offering almost like a protective guardian angel vibe so yes it's going to be an intense month for you yes there will be a lot that comes up for you but it can be a deeply truly transformative time for you providing you are able to do this providing you're able to do the work right and let's face it you guys are capricorn so hey uh, and the fact that you've got the south node there as well I mean, I ain't even going to front. I remember what I, I had the South Node in Aquarius in 2017 going into 20, uh, 2018 coming into 2019. And I tell you, I, I mean, 2018 was a big year for me anyway. But yes, I, I remember that moment and I remember it well. So don't worry, you're going to be all right and you'll make it through. And the truth of it is as well, when you have the South Node move through your sign, it allows you to change something because, and I'm talking about from the perspective of your son here, um, you know, it allows you to change something about yourself, something about a, um, a, something about your inner soul changes something about your inner world changes something about your you know your soul's outlook comes up for you know not even comes up for review but just changes because you're able to let go of whatever your soul's baggage might be your money and materials this month you've got the queen of pentacles you couldn't really ask for any more than that funnily enough everything else might be intense but your money and materials are going from strength to strength the queen of pentacles always represents getting the most out of what you have this could be that your job starts to pay more it could be that you're in line for a promotion it could be that you start a business it could be that the business that you do own starts to generate more income right the queen of pentacles as an experience is always getting more out of what you already have it's also a about having the ideas and the inner resources to start to generate more money to start to generate more funds and all of the rest of that stuff when it comes to your physical health the queen of pentacles right look at this this is about you looking at where your mind affects your body how your thoughts are received by your body your mind body connection in fact your mind body soul connection could be very powerful this month you could really start delving into that and you could be really aware of this stuff you know you could be really really aware of how your physical health is affected by your thoughts how um and more importantly you could be become very aware of what in your invite what or who in your environment affects your thoughts for the and not for the better you could be really sensitive to that this month which is a good thing because you know if you finally know what an irritant is if what is it that's irritating your skin whatever it is that you know you would eliminate that that um that stimulus right you take that thing out of the equation irritation dies down it really is that simple and this month you could be privy to that kind of thing um you know i mean although I see the Queen of Pentacles more as, as Virgo energy. She is um, a an Earth sign female, right? So this would be a Taurus, a Capricorn, yourselves, or a Virgo, right? Even for you guys out there, this is a, a, an aspect or an archetype of your own energy. So your communications with the world at large, this month you have the knight of pentacles right so this is about determination it's about you really for a lot of you this is about you forging a path ahead because it comes here next to that queen of pentacles this really for me does feel like you're it's almost like you're you're now starting to talk about the things that you want to create it's now that you're starting to talk about the things that you want to do and you're really getting proactive about them right this is about you seeking out people that are experts seeking out people that can help you make more money from your business seeking out people that can help you uh, figure out what's going on with your you know your physical health or your physical body like i said for a lot of you this could be talking therapy and because you've got 
that you know it could be a counselor a psychotherapist any of that sort of stuff because you've got the knight of pentacles in your communications it's like you're determined to rewrite your history you're determined to make your life better you're deter and the way that you do this is by delving into the depths of who you really are you're prepared to do the work because you're a capricorn but you're more prepared to do this work this inner work you know not the external stuff and it's like the the big flip that happens for you this year capricorn i will have to say this straight out of the gate in january you start to understand how you will be able to affect your physical, material, tangible life a lot faster, at a better quality, um, in, in a, a much higher vibration by changing your internal viewpoints, by changing your internal world. Uh, this, I mean, this could be where you really start to learn how to fast track your results, where you really start to delve into this energy of, right, you know what, whatever's in here is manifesting out there and vice versa, right? You're gonna start to discover this year some of the unseen strings, you know, and, and how they all attach to each other, which is a really exciting, you know, it was a really exciting, in concept as far as I'm concerned um, you know maybe you lot don't agree but who knows <laughs> your personal relationships you have the death card all right so I'm just gonna go in for it and I have to say this because and it's something that I really tried to it's not that I tried to, to shy away from it it's just I didn't really want to have to talk about this stuff um, mostly because I have a lot of Capricorn people in my life but I will have to say it, and you know, Pluto represents elimination. Uh, it's the ruler of Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio's house is the house of death, right? And I have to talk about this. You have the death card here in your personal relationships. And I will say this, love your, your elderly well, keep them close, love them hard. There may very well be this year that a loved one who is you know in the winter of their lives may very well pass from this realm and i'm sorry to be the bearer of awful news um i, I had to do it last year uh when i did the leo reading uh, and don't forget i am a leo ascendant and when i read those cards i knew what i was seeing for myself uh, and last year you know sure enough my uh, my, my grandmother died um, very painful it's not a nice experience for anybody but I believe in saying what I see and what I feel I will never shy away from the difficult topics as uh, as a tarot reader as uh, an even as an even uh, an aspiring astrologer I will never shy away from those difficult subjects I will never not talk about them because as far as I'm concerned, I will tell you what I feel you need to hear as opposed to what you want to hear. If you want someone to gloss over the difficult stuff for you or the challenging stuff, uh, I'm not your person. I have to tell you that from here on in. Um, so when it comes to your elderly, maybe even when it comes to your elderly extended family, keep them close, love them hard, say what you need to say, um, you know, just in case. I mean, I pray that I'm wrong, right? But I have to, to call it how I see it. Now, on a personal level, for those of you that are single, you've got the Knight of Pentacles next to the Death card. I have to say this is not the month really for romance. It's not the month for love. This is going to be a time where you are deeply changing, where you are in a, a chrysalis, excuse me, in a chrysalis of sorts. And when aspects of you are dying and changing and transitioning into something else, it's uncomfortable. And sometimes it could be ugly. I'm not saying don't reach out to people. I'm just saying that being in a relationship or getting into a new relationship now, <laughs> you know, they might see some, some sides of you that you're like, oh, I wish I could have kept that hidden. Uh, for those of you that are partnered, there are going to be big shifts and changes for you. For some of you, for a select few of you, you may really decide that this is the month. You might just make that decision and say, you know what, this relationship doesn't work for me anymore. That's for a select few of you. Now, for the other select few of you, this is about you saying to your partner, this version of us does not work for me anymore. I want us to change it and I want us to continue forward. The support that you need is there. And believe it or not, the desire for those changes that you want to implement are actually supported by your partner, which is really, really beautiful to see. 
All right, so your first week of the month, you have the hanged man, right? This really is about delving into your mind, into your spirituality. It's about taking the emotion out of it, right? And this isn't about being cold. It's about detaching the emotion so that you can look at this stuff in an honest and frank way and say to yourself, right, you know what? This about my mindset, this about my inner world, this about the garden of my mind needs to change. I am ready to reassess and reevaluate my thought process in order to move towards the things that I want. Your second week of the month, you have the moon card, right? So something comes full circle. For a lot of you, this could really just be you looking at your finances and deciding, you know what, whatever my history of money and finances is, is not gonna be my future. Uh, it could really see you addressing what you're afraid of when it comes to your money and materials and your finances. Uh, when it comes to physical health, this could be you really looking uh, again. I will say this, it could be, a, it could be, uh, a fertile time for some of you so I would just keep that in mind uh, I will say this as well on a very practical mundane level uh, have a look at the plumbing in your house like whatever it is that deals with water so taps all of that sort of stuff on a very very mundane level but yeah in terms of money materials you could really discover this month uh, what it is that you might be afraid of that may have held you back in some way shape or form your third week of the month, you have the world card right underneath the Knight of Pentacles. This is about mastery. This card represents the planet Saturn, which is your ruler, right? Uh, the fact that you have this underneath that Knight of Pentacles, this really is about you determined, determined to make changes, determined to conquer yourself, but also in many ways, excuse me, determined to conquer the world. Right, this is about you saying, you know what, yeah, I'm gonna apply all of those Capricornian traits that I have, and I am going to change my life in some way, shape or form. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with it, it's just how do you make it better? How do you enhance the experience that you're having? through repetition but also through mastery right this is about you really getting very very connected as well like it looks like you're doing some serious networking and with people that can actually help you with people that can actually you know that are in positions of power and authority and then finally your last card of the month you've got the chariot card right underneath the death card so I will say this, and again, I'm sorry to be the bearer of, of bad news. I will say this though, uh, for those of you that may be saying goodbye to a loved one, it's, it will be fast. It, there'll be nothing about it that's drawn out. Uh, it will not be painful. It will not be ugly. It will just be very, very sudden. It will be like a, almost like a, you know, like when a candle goes out. All right, just very, very cool, very calm. For those of you that are single, uh, the chariot card really does say for me that you're more focused on your own goals and you're on really, you know, getting to where you actually want to be within yourself so that you can start to see the changes that you want. Uh, and for those of you that are partnered, this, like I said, you and your partner stand a really good chance this month of getting on that same level, of getting on that same page. And you'll notice, that when you say to your partner, right, you know what, these things don't work for me anymore and they've got to change, as soon as you say that, you'll notice that straight away they're on board, they want to make these changes with you and you will see very, very fast turnarounds in your relationship. Very, very exciting in that respect. Finally, your key to the year. Let's have a look, see at what your key to the year is. What do the cards have to tell you for that? All right, your first, okay, so you've got the temperance card. Trust that all is working out in divine timing in the way that it is supposed to. The temperance card is a very spiritual card. It represents the sign of Sagittarius and it asks you, oh, excuse me, <laughs> and it asks you to surrender yourself to the way that things are, right? And more importantly, to do the work when it comes to your spiritual side, when it comes to your mental side. You know what needs to be eliminated and the fact that this stuff is coming up now, the fact that these things are evolving in your lifescape or making their way into your mind and certain things are shaping up within you and also outside of you, the temperance card basically says make a point of acceptance with that to find the balance that you need. 
in the understanding and the wisdom that the universe knows exactly what it's doing and it will bring you what and who you need in all of the right time. The other thing with the temperance card, this is about finding the beauty in all situations, no matter how challenging they might be, no matter how intense it gets. This is to remind you, because some of the stuff that you're cleansing out here will be past stuff. And the thing is, sometimes we have a tendency to demonize the past. And yeah, even if the, you know, but when you look back on it, even that challenging stuff, even the stuff that was ugly, even the stuff that you think, you know what, well, I could never forgive that, I could never get past it. Look at it, really look at it and ask yourself, what did it give you? What did it allow you to learn? What did it let you know about yourself, about your resilience, about everything in the world in life? Remind yourself of how these things have grown you rather than how they've torn you down, right? Look for the beauty in all situations, in any situation. And for those select few of you, like I said, that might be facing that event, celebrate life rather than mourning death. All right, that, that's always the best way to go because then that way you really truly get to keep somebody alive in your heart and in your mind, all right? So I wish you all an abundance of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance itself. Uh, whatever this month brings you, remember you always get to choose your path. You know, you get to co-create your destiny. Those things that are outside of our remit for change, find ways that are kind and loving and celebratory to traverse those things. All right, I'll be there alongside all of you. I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.